Romans chapter 2. Let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 2. Our reading today will be from verses 25 to verse 29. Romans chapter 2, verse 25 and 29. If you all have it, let's please say amen. 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 Let us read collectively. 25, and it reads, For circumcision barely profit, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the, circum the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision doest transgress the law. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of God. Amen. Amen. Verse 25 reads, For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made unprofitable. Here in Romans chapter 2, from verses 25 through 29, the focus is yet still, God is just in his righteous judgment against Jew and Gentile, with all of them falling short of the glory of God, without excuse. So now the focus is where it has been since verse 17, or even uh, the rollout of beginning of Romans 2. Let's look at verse 17. Romans 2 and 17 reads, Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the what? Wow. In the law, and makest thy boast of God. The Gentile did not have the law in time past before Israel was a nation, before God called out Abram and told him, I will make of you a great nation, which we see in Genesis chapter 12. They had, they had, uh, that consciousness that God put in them what was right and wrong. Now we are dealing with the Jew, and they don't got just in their inward conscience set what is right and wrong. They have the law. They rest in the law. That's, that's their foundation to say, we know what God desires. We know his word. We have his word, and we rest in his law. God is now telling them, you just like the Gentiles are without excuse for the things that you even make your boast in. And as we get to Romans 25 and we work our way down, we come to understand that they did not just boast about the law. We boast that in this outward flesh of us being a Jew and us given the right of circumcision. We also boast about that. They are literally boasting about who they are outwardly. And God graciously, through the uh, appeal of Paul's pen, is letting the Jew know circumcision, true circumcision, is not the outward appearance or the ceremonial or ritual right only. And this is what's going to be declared as God tells the Jew how righteous he is in that righteous judgment against him. Come to Genesis chapter 17. Let's take a look at circumcision. The first time you see it in the scriptures. Genesis chapter 17. Start at verse 9. Genesis 17, verse 9, and it reads, And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant there, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in the generations. 
Verse 10, this is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be what? Circumcised. Verse 11. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. 12 reads. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or brought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house, and he that is brought with thy money, <coughs> must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people, he hath broken my covenant. Just want to link these verses. Just want to link these verses, looking at God's righteous judgment against the Jew who boasts in the law and even boasts in their outward circumcision. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. Genesis 17. No, Genesis 17. I put Genesis 12. Thank you, Pastor. Go ahead. Not Luke, let's go to Leviticus 12. Really appreciate that letting me know that I put Genesis 12. Not to do this Leviticus 12. We're going to read verses. Um, I saw this with you the other week, Pastor. Got to let it dry a little, huh? Leviticus chapter 12. Let's start at verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then shall then she shall be unclean seven days according to the days of the separation for her infirmity, she shall be unclean. And in the eighth day, and in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be made circumcised. Drop to verse 6. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest. Genesis chapter 17, we see Abraham was given circumcision. He was told that he is to do this throughout the, all of his generations. He was also told that anyone who is not circumcised on the eighth day, that that person, that, that male child, shall be what? Cut off from his people. Now, for them to be cut off, they miss out on the covenant blessings. Amen? So it's very important. Everything that Israel is waiting for, everything that they are yearning for, is within the covenant blessings that was given to them. Amen? So they don't want to cut themselves off. So let's see how important this truly, truly, truly is. Come to Luke chapter 2 now. So they just couldn't be circumcised. They had to be circumcised on a particular day. What day was that? The eighth day. Circumcision alone wasn't good enough. Now remember, Romans chapter 2, verse 25, lets you know if, uh, if thou keep the law. Amen? And we're looking at circumcision. They have to keep the law in order to receive these covenant blessings. They have to keep the law. Luke chapter 2, let's start at verse 21. Follow with me. Luke chapter 2, verse 21. And it reads, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, 
according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jesus, I mean, they brought him to Jerusalem, excuse me, to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male child that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. We see Christ himself keeping on the eighth day, keeping that, that circumcision right on point, keeping the law, amen? That his parents totally understood that he was a Jew, he was a male child, and he was going to be the one to usher in all the promises through the Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant, and the Davidic covenant. When I say Abrahamic covenant, what verses reign in your mind? Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. He told Abraham he will what? He will give him some land. I'm going to make of you a great nation. That nation shall be a blessing to all the families of the earth. The Mosaic covenant is now that circumcision, that Abrahamic covenant lies when lies inside of the Mosaic Covenant. When we think of the Mosaic Covenant, we think of the 600 plus laws and commandments that was given. Amen? So circumcision is now one of those commandments. Amen? Also on the eighth day, when we think of or when the Bible writes of the Davidic Covenant, what comes into play? David was a he was a king of Israel. Jesus is going to be what that king that was promised to usher in the promised earthly kingdom. This, now, this, this, this is important because they don't want to be cut off from that. They don't want to be cut off from that, so they have to do what? Get circumcised on the what day? This is vital, and Jesus did that. If Jesus was not to do that, it would have been bad news. Amen? But Jesus being fully God and fully man... Accomplish that, amen? Accomplish that, and they still look unto him as, okay, so far so good. That's the one. That's the one. So far so good, amen? Something else to be noted. Come back to Romans chapter 2. We just want to, we just really want to enforce this. Looking at verse 25, for circumcision verily profited. Meaning true, yes, yes, that's the case. It will profit you, Jews, if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. The verses prior in Romans chapter 2 already lets us know that they are not keeping the law, that they did not keep the law. How about verse 23? Verse 23. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou who? Dishonorest thou God. So right now, we're about to look at what it is and how God, during Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, how he even convinced them that they broke the law, although they, had to, although they were circumcised in the flesh. Catch that? They were circumcised in the flesh. And I want you to also think about what that means and how you see that today. Come on. It's not hard. We see it today with individuals taking pride in their outward appearance of how faithful their church attendance is. Knowing God is pleased. God is absolutely pleased. I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I haven't missed a service since, a, a Sunday service since 1995. No matter how sick I was in my body. You think that don't go on? You think individuals do not take pride in that water baptism? Do not take pride in the good that they, all of these things, and what I'm expressing and what I, what I want us to link to this is that outward appearance that we take so much pride in. We take so much pride in. And God is going to reveal to them, that's where you're stumbling at. That's where you're stumbling at. Amen. Okay, let's, let's read verse 26. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for righteousness? And my question as we look at verse 26, thank you, for circumcision. Let's read that again. This is important. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, 
shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision. What can the uncircumcised do in the sight of God, still looking at time past with this understanding? What can they do being uncircumcised? How can it be linked to them keeping the righteousness of the law, although they are uncircumcised, but yet be counted for circumcision? Meaning, be counted as part of my people. Be counted as the children and people of God who God is pleased with how they pursue him. How can the uncircumcised do such? Let's go to Exodus. Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis 12. We know Genesis 12 almost by heart. Would you agree? Genesis 12, the first three verses. But this is the total length to it. What I want us to start doing, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 lets us know that the Holy Ghost teaches us in a particular way. By comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So you have to compare and you have to collect, you have to link verses for the sake of understanding whatever verse you are studying. You can have your own private interpretation of that verse and know that you where you ought and where you should be. You have to look at verses to know how off course you are or how on course you are. Would you agree? That's truthfully how you study the Bible. So we want to start linking verses together. With Romans 26, Romans 2 and 26 being the focus, how can this uncircumcised Gentile be counted for circumcision? How? What do they have to know? Genesis 12, chapter 12, <clears throat> excuse me, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I'm going to tell you the first thing that they have to acknowledge right now. The first thing they have to acknowledge is that God called out Abraham and told him, I'm going to send you to a land, I'm going to make of you a great nation, and that nation will be a blessing. They had to acknowledge that they understood always in every dispensation what God is doing, who he is using, and what is being expressed through whatever uh, instrument that he's using. The service that God gave to Abraham, the uncircumcised Gentile in time past, had to recognize. Or could they not recognize that and still receive a blessing? You got to recognize the nation that will be the nation blessing all nations. As a Gentile, you have to know this. And now look at verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And indeed shall all families of the earth be what? They had to totally understand any blessing I'm looking for God to come my way with, I have to acknowledge who the blessing goes through. They had to know that. Ignorance of that, there was no blessing for any Gentile in time past. Would you agree or disagree? This is essential. There was all, is always doctrine that is need to be learned for the sake of receiving a blessing or salvation at every dispensation in the, in the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. There is doctrine to be learned. And they had to know that doctrine right there, okay? Now come to Exodus chapter 19. And you're like, I, I, I mean, but Minister Rondell, this is so, this is so, right division 101. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And may I also point out that in Romans chapter 2, Nothing new have Paul revealed. There is no mystery knowledge in Romans chapter 2. Okay? There, there is no mystery knowledge. All of these claims that Paul is making concerning God's right to judgment against you and Gentile, you can go in reverse in your Bible and find out these claims. True? Amen. Amen. It is the truth. Exodus chapter 19. Let's look at verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then shall ye be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. 6. 
and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel. So, guess what else? We saw Genesis, Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Exodus 19, 5 through 7. The <coughs> Gentile, the uncircumcised Gentile, also had to acknowledge that Israel was to be a nation that was above all nations. So the uncircumcised Gentile had to recognize that the blessing goes this way. even to prove that. In time past, was that the order of things? Yep. God, law, Israel, Gentiles. If you was a Gentile, how was you to understand what pleased God and what God was doing? You were to look to who? Israel. Israel, Israel was given a law. And that law what? Exactly. That law was of God. Could you skip Israel and the law and get directly to God in time past as a Gentile? See, this is how the uncircumcised was to keep the righteousness of the law. They was to recognize who they are. They was to recognize who Israel was at that time. And the only way that, the only way that they could receive that blessing. Do you know, this is how I came to figure out also how unwise I was before I understood how to study the word of God rightly divided. And as much time as I still spent in it. I was always reading the Bible when I was on before I knew how to study. Before I really embraced 2 Timothy 2.15 as the true rich way of studying God's word. But yet, I paid no attention to this order of things. No attention to this order of things. As a matter of fact, what I did do is I just read myself as though Israel was whoever was reading the page. They really wasn't special. They, Anybody is Israel. I don't know about you, but that's, that's what I did. In, in, in my time past, lack of understanding. Okay? Now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. To give, to give more proof of this. To give more proof of this. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Let's start reading that verse 5. And it reads, Behold, I have taught you statues and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that you that ye should do so in the land, rather ye go to possess it. Remember that land from Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, that he told Abraham to go? Verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. Please look very closely. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the who? That's plural. Is that concerning Israel or every nation other than Israel? Nation, everywhere, every nation other than Israel, the nations were supposed to look at the law that was given to Israel. Let's read that verse again. Let's do it. Verse 6. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. nations. Which shall hear all these statutes. And this is what the nations will say. Surely this great nation. Surely Israel. Is a wise and understanding people. Do you want to so once again the focus is. How was the uncircumcised Gentile. To be counted as circumcised. In time past history. How was God to be able to say. That Gentile will understand what I'm doing. I told Abraham in Genesis 12, 1 to 3, I will bless them that bless thee. The Gentile that's uncircumcised, he has to know. He has to know how they will get that blessing. Now, Israel, I'm going to give this law to them. And Israel, the law that I give them, that law, that's going to be that city on the hill. They're going to be that light for the world to see, but the light is going to be my word, but at that time, it's my law. They must acknowledge that Israel is the nation that's above them. Let's, let, let's do something also like this. They have 
have to recognize Israel as nigh unto God. They have to also, Gentiles also have to recognize that Israel is above all nations, or as Exodus chapter 9, verse 5 and 6 says, above all people. A peculiar treasure. They, they, a Gentile had to recognize that Israel is above them. They could not see themselves as equal. Now, once again, this was my era of my yesterday lack of understanding years ago. I didn't see Israel as above Gentiles. I, 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 I saw them as equals. So guess what I was doing? Not studying God's word, God's way. Which, benefit, which benefited me how much? None. And of a Gentile thought that in time past, they didn't have to acknowledge that. That thought, that error, absolutely condemned them and there was no blessing for them. This is essential. But yet it's basic. You see, that, that's why we would never get away from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 through 8. You never run there. Standing right there. Everything I say is going to be linked. This is why I said in Romans chapter 2, as we work 25 through 29, this is not, this is not hidden wisdom. Romans 2, 25 through 29. It's not hidden wisdom. Okay? This is all what was already revealed. This is all, they knew this. They knew this. Amen. Let's read Romans chapter 2, verse 27. Let's get this right. It's absolutely, it's absolutely healthy for you to study the word of God, comparing spiritual things with spiritual meaning, comparing the verses, whether you're studying baptism, you're studying circumcision. You're studying forgiveness. You want to link your verses. You want to be able to say in time past, forgiveness was given this way. Your five, six, maybe even eight or nine verses. However many you can find, find. Find. Study to show yourself approved a workman under God. Don't be like today's so cool with this. Because, see, this is how, as you continue to grow, as you continue to grow, you can start to show others who may only be 2%. In their understanding. Meaning still got that babe in Christ understanding. All they know is the, the, the simplicity of the gospel. But they can look at you and you can tell them why you study the way you study and why it's profitable. Brother, you need some verses to say you got that assurance of that understanding. What, what, what verse gave you that? What verse gave you that? How did you know you was wrong? What verse corrected your understanding to say you was wrong last week? There we go. You can pair it. You can bear. It ain't, I just got a feeling. I got that feeling. And when I got that feeling, that feeling, Joyce Myers told me, you got to know that, you know that, you know that, you know that, you got to know. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Because there used to be some of us that used to have that, I just know that I know. That's right. You got how many verses? That's why I like talking to you. <laughs> Who been there? I know that I know. But you got no verses. Yeah. You shouldn't know that. Amen. Okay? You shouldn't know that. Okay, so Romans 2 and 27. Let's read that and, 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 and let's, uh, let's compare some spiritual things with spiritual. Romans 2 and 27, 2, 27 reads, And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision do is transgress the law. Listen close. Romans 2 and 27 points us to God will use the uncircumcised by nature. Those who are not Jews. Who are not circumcised. He will prove that, listen, Israel, I will show you they had a stronger faithfulness to the law that was given to you than you had in your circumcision. I will show you that you are not faithful to me, nor even my law, although 
you have, although you have the ceremonial and the ritual operation of circumcision in your foreskin, and I will use an uncircumcised Gentile to show you. That's heavy. That's embarrassing if the word of God can prove that. Let's see if the word of God proves that. Come with me to Luke chapter 7. I want to ask for some help with this. Can somebody help me? I need, I need a male. I'm going to ask for a male to let me use them up here. You've got to be circumcised. I need a mouse. No, no, no. Good question. Good question. I need, I need a model. I need a model. I need a model. A male. Thank you, Deacon. I want you to stand real close to me like you're facing me. And I just want to read Luke chapter 7 and go start at verse 1. But I want us to look at these verses and I want you to see. Now every one of you, all you, you are all Israelites. Put yourself as Israelites right now, okay? You are Jews, okay? You are an uncircumcised Gentile, okay? All right, here we go. Luke chapter 7, let's start. Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a, sin, and a certain centurion servant who was there unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he had heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews. That's very important. Listen close. Beseeching him that he will come and heal his servant. So let's understand from verse 3. You are the servant. You are not even the individual who, who you were told to go to the elders. Amen? So it's already your unworthiness that we see you understand that Israel is above you in stature already in the sight of God. Okay? Let's continue. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly saying that he was worthy for whom he should for whom he should do this. Okay, he said that. Verse 5. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a what? A synagogue, a place of worship. Is he blessed? What verse are you connecting with what he did in Luke chapter 7, verse 5? What verse are you connecting with that? And I will bless them that bless thee. He built them a synagogue. He understand that, listen, this is the way that the blessings flow. I want, if I want to get a blessing from God, I got to make sure that I would. I, I have to bless Israel. I have to bless them. Okay, let's continue. Verse 6. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Watch what he said. Because what he said, Jesus is going to be amazed by. Jesus is going to marvel at, so we really want to hear what he got to say in verse 8. For I am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Look at verse 9. When Jesus heard these sayings, he what? He marveled at him. Marveled at you, Pastor. He marveled at the Gentile. What you? After he marveled at what was what? Said. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen. What was in this Gentile, what he believed who God said Israel would be, in order for him to receive the blessing, the things he had to know, the things he had to understand, and the things he had to believe, guess what he did? All of them. I know it, I understand it, I believe it, and Jesus marveled. But catch what the Israelites, that's you guys, watch what he do now. He marveled at them and turned him about. You Gentile, you look. And turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. 
No, not in Israel. You tell me of you as Jews, would that make you feel very good or very bad? Yeah. Yeah. I ain't found faith like that in all Israel. Now, once again, thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. <laughs> what's the, uh, Let's go, let's, let's look at Romans 2 again. The, the, I don't know about you. And matter of fact, I know you can uh, relate to this. Sometimes you ever see something in the privacy of your study, you're like, hold on, I gotta go look at that verse again. Because maybe I'm taking it out of context. Maybe I'm pulling it somewhere or I shouldn't pull it. Let me just read this again. So let's read Romans 2 and 27 again. And shall not the uncircumcised, which is by nature, if it fulfilled the law, judge thee? Who by the latter and circumcision doest transgress the law. The Lord Jesus used a uncircumcised Jew to put Israel in perspective of the honor that you think you have for me and my law. The words that you thought you did believe that Moses and the prophets told you. You didn't believe those words. Come with me to John chapter 5, and then we go to Matthew 8. John chapter 5. In the book of John, it lays out Jesus Christ as being 100% humanity, 100% man, and 100% who else? <clears throat> 100% God, 100% deity. And I want you to know something, as you read the Gospel of John again, next time you read it, watch how many times you're going to be mind blown to see the Jews go back and forth with him about his deity. This, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. They, they, they just won't believe that him and the Father is one. They won't believe that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus is telling them time, 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 time again. See my humanity. See my deity. Yes, I am God in the flesh through and through, 100% each way. And they just, if you want to honor the Father, honor me. You don't honor the Father because you dishonor me. He's telling this through and through in the Gospel of John. Through and through. And they just what? They continue to go back and forth with him. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. And in John chapter 5, listen to this. Start reading at verse 44. Now start reading at verse 42, okay? Verse 42, John 5, 42, it reads, But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another man shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye, what's that B word? Believe which receive of honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. For he wrote of who? He wrote of me. Watch verse 47. But if ye believe not him, his writings, how shall you believe my word? How? how you, you, that's what Jesus just did. He compares spiritual things with spiritual. He linked their lack of belief that he is who he said he is to. It all started with y'all didn't even believe the words of Moses that y'all read all day and all night. You read them. You search them. But you don't believe. You see, this is something. This, this, this is something. This is something that you can, in this age of grace. Let me bring this to this age of grace. Let me bring this to the dispensation of the grace of God. You can have someone who is the most dreadful husband or wife you want to meet, the most disobedient child that you believe is on the face of the planet, someone who can drink scotch and vodka like it's purified water. Get them to believe the gospel. Amen. You let them give themselves attendance to read it. Remember they pass. 
and then watch their future as they allow the word of God to effectually work in them. Watch when they believe the word of God, the word of God which you believe which effectually works in you. It will do something that will rock almost our understanding. And for some of us, it causes us to say, I don't think that he or she would ever reach that level. <laughs> What's the secret? You really believe that word, don't you? You believe that word. You understand who you were, and you are fighting to understand who you are through those scriptures, not that you are in Christ. And sometimes I see you crying. Sometimes I see you hit your head on the wall. But you just run right back to that book, don't you? Studying in God's way. You really believe that thing. You really believe that thing. Yes, I do. Look at your neighbor and say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. You really believe that thing. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. That's why we get it. That's why we come together. To encourage each other. Yo, you keep believing that word. You keep believing that word. It will effectually work in you. Believe that word. Don't just read that word. Believe that word. And study it God's way. But when you believe that, ain't that's what we're supposed to be doing? I, I know that's what I'm supposed to do. I know that's what Pastor Lee understand. That's what Pastor Scott. That's what we're supposed to be doing, right? You're trying to convince me to believe that word. No matter what your state is in life right now. No matter what your circumstance is right now. You're trying to get me to bring that word to that circumstance. Come on. And Jesus told him, you really don't believe. Turn to Matthew chapter 8. Still looking at Romans chapter 2, verse 27. Matthew chapter 8. Jeremy, I'm going to need you again. Matthew chapter 8. Right now? Yes, yes, please. And thank you. Please and thank you. We're going to start reading at verse 5, okay? Similar passage, but you're gonna see some you're gonna see some things different. You are who? You are the uncircumcised Gentile. Okay, Matthew chapter 8, let's start reading that verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant life at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come unto my roof, come under my roof, but speak the word only. Here we go again with this word. I, I mean, this individual really believes the capability of, uh, of the word of God that's in Christ and who Christ is. Amen. He really believes this. But speak the word, watch this, only, that my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he go up, and to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. He understand what people who put themselves under the words of someone who is above them do. He understands this. Verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that follow him. Now, y'all really want to hang on to what Jesus is about to say right now. This is big. Verily, verily, I say unto you, verse 10, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, you guys are Jews, you guys are Israelites, and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Watch this. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weakness. And gnashing of the teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, hang on to these words. And as thou hast believed, so would be done unto thee. They all looking at you because I just told all of them, Jesus just told all of them, the children of the king will be, verse 12. Will be there, should, they should be cast out into outer darkness where there should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What do you guys, as Jews, how would you take that? We're supposed to be the chosen ones. Did you come on? Thank you, thank you. Did you catch that? Back to Romans chapter 2, verse 27. When you read it, you, you gotta keep, gotta keep looking at this. He just used a Jew, he just used the uncircumcised Gentile. It made a reference to the Jews about outer darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm -hmm. Told them 
man would even be in the kingdom. You should, as a Jew, I would be utterly troubled, utterly troubled, <laughs> like, like, like confused, mad, upset, like, yo, <laughs> I remember years ago before I was unsaved, somebody would say something like, yo, yo, I, I gotta ask you something, yo, did you mean, did you mean, <laughs> and I had maybe ill intentions, because somebody came sort of sideways, but they really meant what they said, oh, okay, so you meant next time you see me, you want to fight me. You ever had somebody say something to you in an ill manner and you wasn't for sure they was really being mean? He is! <laughs> was anything nice about that, that as a Jew, after you heard that being present, that Jesus was like, man, don't worry about that. <laughs> Come on, we, Come, that's just, you know, he say that to everybody. <laughs> is anything, should you be comfortable as a Jew hearing that? With a Gentile by your side. That really should disturb you right there. If you really understood how Jews view Gentiles, you understood it's one thing for you to come at me as a Jew the way you're coming at me, Jesus, but you're doing it with a Gentile that's uncircumcised on your side. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No, he wasn't kidding. He wasn't kidding. He wanted them to recognize. He wanted them to understand some things. Romans 2, 28. Romans chapter 2, verse 28. This is what he wants them to understand. 28 reads, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. You think you Jews are a Jew because you got the Abrahamic Right of circumcision in your foreskin the eighth day? You think that's what make you you think that's what make you my people? Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. What makes you not a Jew? Come with me to John chapter 8. This is a, this. This is huge. Start with me with verse 30. Won't be able to go through all, so we're going to bounce from verse to verse for the sake of time's sake. You got to make this, make this kind of quick. Let's read verse 30, okay? As he spake these words, many believed on him. With the conversation, with the teaching that's going on, many Jews are starting to believe on Jesus. They're starting to be swayed with Jesus is the Christ. He who Moses wrote about, whoa, this is him. The prophets wrote about, this is him. This is that Jesus. Watch verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And Jesus do exactly what the law immediately always does. He hit them with an if. He tell us, and now y'all got to continue, though, okay? Y'all starting to believe. Y'all seen who I am, but you got to continue this. Was the law always conditional or was it unconditional? It was conditional, so they had to do some what? Continuing. And that's nothing new, is it? We can go back to, 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 to Moses' writings, and they always had to continue, okay? Come with me to verse 37. Verse 37, he says, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. Jesus told him, listen, I know you have the outward circumcision of Abraham. I know by race, by ethnicity, you are Abraham's seed. But can I tell you something? You seek to kill me. You see, I say again, when you read the Gospel of John, it is like, are you kidding me, the way that they expose hatred toward Jesus? Hatred. They hated him. Okay? Go with me to verse 43. Jesus tells them this way. Why do, you not, why do ye not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Yes, that outward circumcision you have, you don't understand my speech. You don't hear my words. They what? They simply did not believe the writing of Moses. So you can't believe who I, that Moses really wrote about me. 
But you never believe what Moses, what Moses wrote. This is a big deal. And he's telling them, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Look at verse 47. He that is of God heareth whose words? God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of who? Ye are not of God. He's telling, he's telling them, I know you are Abraham's seeds. But you're not of God. No, you're not. John 1 and 1 reads what? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But yet, they have no room for God and His Word. And also in the book of John, Jesus tells them, you seek to do the will of your Father, which is the devil. He was a, he was a liar since the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. They have no room for who Jesus proclaims he is, although they are and have that outward appearance of what? Circumcision. Come with me to Matthew chapter 23. Let's start at verse 27. We're going to read verse 27 and 28. Verse 27 reads, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto white sepulchres, which indeed, listen, this is who, this is who they took pride in. This is what they took pride in. Which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones. And of how much uncleanliness? All. Oh. Oh, look at verse 28. Even so ye also outwardly appear how? Right. Unto who? Amen. Men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And as we close, I have to pick up later. As we close, come with me to Romans chapter 10. This is what those who are just a Jew outwardly, who are just circumcised outwardly, but not with that inward circumcision. They really didn't understand what a Jew really was. God is telling them, as Paul points out in Romans chapter 10 in the first three verses, this was their problem with this outward appearance. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is... That they might be saved. Okay, well, Paul, they thought they was. What were they doing wrong? Let's see in verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to what? No. Is, does the world today, are they low in having a zeal for God? Is the church world, are they empty or are they kind of running on low with having a zeal for God? Are they running on low and almost totally out of gas when it comes to having it according to knowledge? Yeah. Yeah. You see, that circumcision that's, that's just in the flesh and not in the spirit, it, it, it works for that outward righteous appearance. And in doing so, it's contentious against God's word, against the works of God, no matter what the dispensation is. It's contentious with the word of God. And now the shameful part about it with Israel, God gave them signs, miracles, and wonders. He told Moses in Deuteronomy and Exodus 4, Moses is like, they won't believe me. They won't believe that you sent me. God said, okay, tell them that I am sent you. He said, they won't believe me. Okay, I'm going to give you the staff and it turned into a serpent. Put your hand in, 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 in your coat and your cloth. Take it out. They will see what I'm doing externally. Jesus did the same things. 
and told them, listen, if you don't believe my words, just believe my works. They believed how many? Neither. The words profited none and the works profited none. That's the definition of contentious. There's nothing God can say or do that will cause for the, the, those who are just circumcised in the flesh to believe. Them. And verse 3 puts it this way. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. We will pick up next time I teach in Romans dealing with uh, Romans chapter 2 still dealing is seeing how the circumcised did not submit themselves to the righteousness of God and how they seek to establish their own. You can turn to Matthew 15 and what you see. Jesus say what? These people worship me with their lips, but their heart is far, their heart is far from me. They, they what? Lay aside the commandments of God for the traditions of the elders. They are what? Establishing their own righteousness. We're going to communicate a system that God is going to call us righteous even with us coming up with our own doctrines. Is that not popular today? That's exactly what they do. So with that being said, we close. You want to go? I turn it over into Pastor Leroy, Pastor Scott Hands.